Ajay, in the last maybe three decades of experience, you've seen enough movies and enough genre of movies come, succeed, and then flop, and then go by. We've seen horror movies do great, and then the subsequent horror movies go flop. We've seen sci-fi, CGI graphics, the latest animal doing gangbusters. But over the journey of last you know, three decades or more, if you've been a movie watcher as well, what kind of genre you think sticks with people or audience? Is there a magic formula that the producers and the directors be aware of that what kind of genre really, really still works or is, you know, Sadabahar genre if there is one? First of all, thank you for that uh, incredible introduction and thanks for having me here. Uh, well, uh, yeah, 34 years I've been making cinemas, but obviously been watching movies for a much longer time. Um, I think the key is that doesn't matter what genre it is, uh, it has to connect with the audiences. That's very important. Any story, any genre, horror, romantic, uh, science fiction, action, if it doesn't connect with the audience, if the audiences don't uh, feel that they need to see the movie or they're engaged and they don't get impacted by it, a comedy has to make you laugh, horror movie has to make you, uh, you know, get you scared, then the movie doesn't do well. So I think that's the key. It was, uh, it's been uh, true since time immemorial, pre-COVID, post-COVID. I know we created this artificial uh, sort of a gap, um, but uh, definitely that's uh, true. Having said that, because, um, uh, you know, big budget movies get played across many screens. They get carpet bombed in 5,000, 6,000 screens, and they're made in such a manner that they resonate with just not a, a, a small, uh, urban or esoteric audience. They have to resonate with everybody. Therefore, the revenues, the budgets are high and even the revenues are very high. Therefore, you say Animal did whatever 600 plus or uh, you know, Barbie did whatever 1.5 billion or Avatar did this much. Therefore, the noise of these movies becomes uh, and they're um, sort of, uh, they become more prominent in, in people's uh, uh, you know, minds that okay, this is what does well. But uh, on ROI basis, you can have a small movie like Kantara, which may have done only made for 20 crores, and it can do a 300 crore box office. So that probably will be much more. Uh, so I think it doesn't really matter the genre to answer you th the question. It has to connect with the audience. That's the most important so human thing. human connection, dil ko lagni chahiye, and then it works. Yeah. <laughs> but is, within the dil ko lagni chahiye, you know, formula that you say, is there still a north-south divide, which has always been, at least in the last three years, that suddenly has become that north or south ki movies bahut achhi chali, then suddenly you have Atli coming with Shah Rukh Khan and then the south-north combination sort of working together. But is there a genre difference between, say, a north-south or, you know, a tier one, tier two town? Well, I mean, India is probably the most disparate uh, country in terms of consumers, tastes and preferences. It's incredible. Uh, you know, on the, and, and everything is contradictory. Whatever I'm saying on one side of the mouth, I'll also repeat and contradict, contradict it from the other side of my mouth. Definitely, uh, for example, Punjab, we were talking about earlier, a lot of Punjabi movies do well. So we have a circuit of almost about 100 screens there. Uh, so when the Punjabi lineup is not very good, we get worried because it comes below the threshold level. Having said that, one very positive thing that has come out during COVID is that because people were at home, and they were watching Tamil, Telugu, Malayalam, Kannada, you know, movies uh, of different languages. Now suddenly post-COVID, that amalgamation of South, North uh, is really doing very well. You gave an example of Jawan just now. And uh, RRR, you know, famously as uh, Rajamoli quoted that he's not making movie for only as a regional film, he's making a movie for India. So I think now we're finding more and more uh, movies are getting, uh, are resonating uh, uh, all over the country. At yes. the same time, there are pockets which are only meant for a certain uh, region. Though Rajamoli made movie for India, I think his <laughs> songs went across the world. So congrats right. and thank God we got the Oscars due In to him. Incredible. Right. So from the genre and from the people preference, uh, I'm going to move to the movie business preference. Uh, movie makers and exhibitors over the period, and more so in the last five years, have seen some epochal changes, if I may use the word. 
there was a time when television had come in and people had assumed that you know the small tv small box will kill the cinema people will possibly enjoy so much of content on television at home and these were the early 70s and 80s that people might just stop coming to the theaters that never happened television did not change or challenge cinema but something else happened during covid people were forced not to go out to cinema people were forced to watch entertainment at home at the 42 inch or 51 inch you know screens then there was this fear that so much of ott exposure would alter habits and people would maybe start enjoying too much on television and led entertainment at home costs less so they will possibly stop or at least reduce going to the theaters you also went through a huge challenge and churn in your business but hey in the last two years people have started coming back to the movies and much much more your numbers your financial numbers are speaking about it but there's equally consumption happening and increasing on ott so the change did come but did it come i mean i don't think it has come at the cost of cinema why do you think this has happened that people are watching ott as well as a lot of cinema in the theaters well uh, people are not uh, straight jacketed uh, in their habits i mean you know this is a very hackneyed analogy about eating so you have kitchens at home you have zomato and swiggy delivering you uh, you know home uh, home delivery of whatever food you want at the same time you go out to restaurants hotels and stuff like that so similarly people will do what they feel like you know they can watch a tv show at home if they feel like and uh, at the same time they want to go out and get that experience of watching a big screen movie with everybody around them so i think uh, of course during that 18 month period when we were shut there was no choice neither for the filmmakers nor for the consumers but the appetite to consume content was definitely there but the moment uh, you know covid thank god went away and uh, and the whole uh, you know built up pent up demand was there and people just went back to which is still the number one form of out of home entertainment in india and i find indian market very very different to any other market in the world because we have 1400 films that come to through the system and uh, other than cricket and you know uh, movies there's not much happening out of home and people just love going to movies as simple as that so on on the one side there's a very robust uh, appetite to go and see movies on the uh, on the demand side and on the supply side also hardly any country in the world no country in the world has such a robust supply so i think given these two factors and human nature i think it was a matter of time that when cinemas opened people would would go out to the number one form of uh, entertainment so so with this behavior what would be your recommendation to the producers or to the director what should be there the, the story can get uh, uh, unfolded through seven episodes 10 episodes two seasons three seasons it's a great uh, you know creative uh, uh, sort of out, uh, outlet for them at the same time big screen canvas is also available and the economic rational over there is extremely compelling i just gave you the example of kantara recently we had 12th fail not made for a very big uh, budget a small budget and and sky is the limit because when you when you release a movie just because it's a small budget doesn't mean that you go to ott because a small budget movie if you go to an ott channel straight away you'll only get cost plus but when you release it in the cinema and if you're confident about your uh, content and if it connects with the consumer again the example of 12th fail samba sam bahadur probably not so small but still fukre 3 dream girl sky is the limit they can, because there is no tap or cap on how much sort of uh, they can earn so i think it's a great time but they can choose to do what they feel like as long as they make a content which does which uh, helps the entire value chain so if they make something for the ott platforms what do they want their subscription base should increase it must move the needle for them and if they make it for the big screen it must move the needle for the exhibit exhibitor producer and the distributor and they must have a complete monetization journey of that content it 60% of the revenues come from theatrical then they can further exploit it or monetize it rather i don't like to to use the word exploit 
monetize it on OTT, monetize it on satellite and other channels. So like, it's a great time. The key is make good content, which connects with the consumer, understand your consumer. Right, so you reckon there is a play for all forms and genres, but you need to first figure out what's your ambition. Yeah. Basis the ambition, your playbook can be drafted. Absolutely. You can target the big cinemas with the big budget. Yeah. But have the monetization picture very clearly planned for it. Right. Thanks a lot. We'll move to technology and the usage of technology. There is, I mean, your PVR has been the first sort of biggest proponent of experiences and benchmarked for usage of latest technology. We've experienced director's card lounge experience, we've experienced IMAX, 3D. There's a whole host of technology that has come into play from the exhibitor side, so that people have wow experience, right? But today there is also the metaverse, there's VR, AR being talked about. What do you reckon, where is technology headed on the exhibitor side? I'll come to the AI because that's the buzzword, but let's first stick to the experience of metaverse, AR, VR. Do they have a role to play on the exhibitor side or should that be still in the comfort of the living room? Well, um, I, you know, there's a relentless, uh, relentless effort from all technology providers all over the world. So we go to all the exhibitions of the cinema, uh, industry, uh, technology providers. There's a lot of effort that they're putting in uh, to ensure that the experience of watching movies on the big screen is getting better and better. So whether it's through laser projectors, uh, whether it's the sound through Atmos, IMAX, Ice, ScreenX, because you need to make it more and more experiential. People should say, wow, this I can't get at home. You know, uh, unless, unless we provide that technology, People will say, this is, I, I could have easily sat at home. So they must get that wow factor. So uh, luckily, a lot of effort. Currently, whatever little I've seen of AR and VR, it's in the foyer areas. I think IMAX did something which VR, which did not, it, it was still a bit clunky. But I, I don't see uh, those days uh, you know, far behind when somebody will come out with something for the, where the big screen and the AR, VR experience will amalgamate. So you reckon, AR, VR right now seems to be on the stage of looking like a wow, but not feeling like a wow. Yeah, and I also, to be honest, my personal view is I still find it a little isolating. It's a little contrarian to what a big screen, if you want to watch, I, you know, when to, uh, you know, if you watch a comedy, everybody laughs. If you see a horror movie, everybody sort of, uh, so I think that whole community, community, effect. Effect, community feeling of watching a movie together, True. maybe VR can become isolating. Uh, so uh, that's why these experiments are still very much on the drawing board, okay. whether they should be brought into, it's like going to a restaurant and everybody like doing his own thing. Mm. So I think uh, we have to be a little careful about those experiments, in my view. Right. What about the role of AI? AI, of course, I mean, you know, the guys went on a big strike because of AI. <laughs> so yes. uh, as far as the production and uh, content creation is concerned, Everybody knows lots of things the are happening. The first knock-on effect was Hollywood shut. Yeah, that's, because correct. Of AI. that's <laughs> correct. So I think there's no limit to what that's going to do in terms of content creation. In our own company and in the exhibition sector, of course, as I said, we have a hugely uh, uh, heterogeneous set of customers. There's so many cohorts with so many tastes and preferences. Uh, so India, you know, people really, really are very finicky about how they watch movies. So we are trying to use AI data analytics to figure out and can we have customize our marketing and our communication efforts uh, uh, by the use of AI? We've got 20, 30 million unique customers. It's very difficult to communicate with them manually. So that's where uh, we're using. And as uh, you know, my colleague mentioned just now when we were chatting, that even um, back of the house, uh, you know, how to program movies, uh, see where the defects are, uh, you know, how to run our operations very of 1,700 screens very smoothly. There's a lot of technology being used, which people don't get to see, but it's all behind the scene to give them a wonderful experience. Right, thanks. I'll move to two important questions, which are more personal in nature, and I'll take the liberty on this stage. <laughs> you, you personally gone through a transition. So my first label for you today is the transition man. You've, you've experienced changing lanes. You went through a period of COVID business downright to zero, nobody coming to watch movies, and then you decided 
in the sake of the larger good and the movie business, let me merge with my biggest competitor. You took the hard call, being an entrepreneur, to merge with Inox. <laughs> that decision ain't easy. People talk of startups pivoting. Here is a man, 25 years in the movie business, and going back to the drawing board and saying, do I need to pivot? And if I need to pivot, how? I'm more interested on the how part of it. Yeah. How did you arrive at a decision? Because for any entrepreneur, it's a very tough call. Yeah. It's, a, it's a personal question. Some may go through a catharsis kind of experience that I do or how do I do We want to understand when did you decide and then how did you gather the courage to do it? Wow, that's a very introspective question. <laughs> well, uh, you know, COVID, of course, uh, annihilated the industry. It was completely uh, something that nobody was, I was never anticipating. As I was mentioning earlier, 1920 year, financial year 19 to 20, uh, was probably the best year the film industry has seen, not only in India, and, and globally, global box office was 42 billion, by the way. And uh, suddenly your shutters are sh gone. 120 million people come into the cinemas and nobody is coming. So obviously it was a body blow to another level. And uh, so we, need to, we needed to get out of it. And uh, I've been running a listed company for a long time, 2006. Before that I've been running Village Roadshow, which was a partnership. Then private equity came, another form of partnership, but with a financial investor. But this time, when we looked at the balance sheet and the way it got destroyed in COVID, and it's not, when you're running a public limited company, it's not your fiefdom anymore. You don't just think about yourself. You have to think about so many stakeholders, your people who work for you, people who've invested in you. It was a personal decision, but at the same time, I had to look at the big picture, the board, uh, various uh, you know, people like Renuka Ramnath was on the board, she's invested, Warburg Pinkers. And we felt that if we put the two companies together, the balance sheet will become stronger and, uh, and we should be able to. There was a lot of uncertainty about what's going to happen, like you said earlier, post-COVID with people's habits changing. We felt at that time that was the best decision to take, that if we put the two companies together and uh, then uh, probably the financial strength of the company uh, balance sheet will improve and the brand will become stronger. And if there are any sort of... Uh, uh, you know, impediments and volatility that, that is still to be experienced together will become much stronger. And uh, so that was it. It was a decision taken um, uh, in those circumstances. There's one thing about balance sheet and making sense on the balance sheet front. I'm trying to figure out, you know, how did Ajay Bijli tell himself? And whom did you tell it first? In your family or you have a friend? Whom did you first say, you know, I'm exploring this? Should I even go ahead? I think uh, family comes first. Mm. So, of course, you know, I've been running the company. As I said, even uh, pre-merger, uh, you know, I was only like, what, 25, 26% shareholder. And, you know, True. so a lot of people were holding, held the company. So it was a widely held company. Uh, but yet, um, I think um, the most important stakeholder was my family. And I said that this is going to happen. It's going to reduce the stake. There's going to be another partner who's been my competitor. But credit to the gens, because gens have another two very uh, successful businesses. And, uh, and this is the only business I do. Uh, so they felt that, yes, this partnership can work if they continue to do what they're doing. And mm -hmm. I, I, do, I take care of the merged entity. So I think uh, when you ask about balance sheet, I agree with you, that's not the only criteria. Also, because I was getting the same amount of uh, freedom mm. to run the company the way I was running pre-merger, that made it uh, an easier decision easier for me. Decision to when I say freedom, I never ran it, ran it with too much freedom even earlier, as I said, because I wanted to run the company with a lot of governance. True. We had an independent board, we had private equity. Has to be responsible. You have to be. So I True. think I was pretty True. used to running yeah. it with partners, running it listed. So um, I said, okay, if you put all this together, maybe you know we create something with a scale which is unmatched. Hmm. So we were 900, they were about six, 700. So getting 1,800, 1,700, being in about 115 odd cities, 360 properties, is very difficult to replicate in a country like India. Right. So you've been a transition man. In the last 
year or so, you've taken another label, if I may, or the moniker, transformation. The reason why I say this is, the exhibitor, movie producer, Ajay Bijli, turns to a singer. Oh my God. And he transforms himself, gets up, from what I hear, every day at 4.30 for his riyaz, <laughs> does religious practice of songs and singing with great dedication, and then moves on to exercise, and then runs the show. How did this transformation come about? You call your band Random Order, I'm sure this is not a random decision. <laughs> With a man like you, I'm sure a lot would have been thought through, but there is a lot of heart into it also. When did the transformation of Ajay Bijli happen? <laughs> it's really not a transformation. If, you, if I keep talking about that I'm a singer, the stock will take a further nosedive. <laughs> I'm still... I'm still well, <laughs> they want you to sing away to the <laughs> box office. No, no, I'm still running the company full time. But it's like people have, um, somebody plays golf, somebody plays tennis, you, someone plays bridge, they have their own hobbies and so this was my hobby. Uh, but during COVID, of course, uh, I wanted uh, a release. I wanted uh, to move away from all the drudgery. And as a kid, I used to sing and I had a band called Modus Operandi. And then I said, why not do this as well? There are only so many Zoom calls you can do. <laughs> to negotiate with the developers and to uh, you know, make sure the ship is afloat with the investors and financial institutions. So I got a bunch of um, musicians together and uh, very good uh, musicians from Delhi and uh, you know, uh, agnostic of the genre. We said we'll sing whatever we like to play and that's how Random Order came mm -hmm. about because I didn't want to be pigeonholed into rock band, classic band, jazz band, Hindi band, English band, Punjabi band. So I said, let's call it Random Order, we'll do what we feel like. Uh, so it was fun. So that was, and, and I, I still pursue it, even post-COVID, because it gives me a lot of relaxation. So people play golf, games, bridge, the movie wallas go singing. I don't know, I, I, I can only <laughs> talk about myself. <laughs> okay, on that note, we unfortunately couldn't fly down his band, but we've requested oh Mukhda Antara Kuch To Ho Jai. Kuch to ho jai ki nahi ho jai. Oh my God. So you can sing your way out from this auditorium, but we won't let you go unless oh you do God. it. Yaar. He's really put me on a spot here. <laughs> <laughs> you can go for ekunkar or whatever, you know. I've well. never seen audiences more attentive. When I was talking, no one was listening. Look, as much as you watch the picture, you can listen to the songs as much as you can. Okay, my, uh, my daughter uh, made uh, Brahmastra. She was the creative director. So, I'll just sing a few lines from one of her movies. Your choice. Okay, you got, guys got to join me. I'm not going to do the hard work here. It's a very popular song. Lines, tell me, let's start. Chingariya, ye jo mere Sine mein hai dafan Inko zara deke hawa Ban jaun mein agan दहक रहा है बन के शरारा देख मेरा बदन सब कुछ मेरा करके फना करता हूँ मैं हवन You know the song? Om Deva Deva Om Deva Deva Namah Nama ho nama om deva deva om deva deva nama ha Nama ho nama Ladies and gentlemen, Ajay Bijli. Thank you so much.